here moving in our midst we worship you and worship you you are here you're working in this place i worship you i worship you Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are we make miracle work, a promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. We worship you, we worship you, you are here, healing every heart, we worship you, we worship you, you are here, turning lives up. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, that that is who you are, Lord. Lord, you are not just one dimensional, Lord, but you have so many facets. Lord, you are so complex, Lord. Lord, but want something so simple, Lord, which is love, adoration, and 
and praise, Lord. Lord, may our praise be strong this morning, Lord. I'm so thankful, Lord, Lord, that we get to praise you. Lord, that we get to come here, meet, and commune with others, Lord. Lord, that iron sharpens iron, Lord, you're in our midst. Holy Spirit, fall on us, Lord, as we worship this morning. In your name. A thousand times I fail, so your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, I'm God in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all fame. My heart and my soul, that I give you control, consume me from the inside of the Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace. To love you from the inside out You will above all else My purpose remains The art of losing myself Bringing you praise, everlasting. Your light will shine when all the saints never ending. Your glory goes beyond the fame. Oh, in my heart, my heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from me. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine with up in my heart in my heart and my soul Lord I give you control consume me from the inside out Lord let justice and praise become my embrace 
to love you from the inside out. Lord, I thank you so much, Lord, for the lyrics that we're going to sing, Lord. Lord, you alone are God. You alone are God. We declare the glory of your name. Lord, the truth of the matter, Lord, right now is that you have this whole world in your hands. Lord, you make men who they are. Lord, we see kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, Lord. Lord, but you remain. You remain on your throne. You remain in control of it all. So, Lord, may we rejoice in that. Lord, like the early Christians who were in a, in a period of time where it was not safe to be a Christian, Lord. Lord, and what happened? They thrived because they trusted in you, because they knew this truth that you alone are God, no one else. Not a president, not politics. Lord, you alone. So, Lord, may we put you back on your, in your rightful place, Lord, on the throne of our hearts, Lord. Lord, may we trust and glorify your name, come what may. But for you alone are God. Confess my hope, the light of your salvation. Where I lose myself, I will find your all I need. Let's lift this up. Sing my song of the Savior's love. my soul unto God alone. I will meet you here in this life we call surrender.
to be with you guys. Would you pray with me right now, Lord God? Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that we can come together in Jesus' name. And Lord, know that you're in our midst. We love you. And we want to right now, Lord God, I ask that you would speak to people today that it wouldn't be just flesh and blood and some sort of sermon, Lord, that I would put together. But I pray that, Father, that your Holy Spirit would speak to this body because you love us so much. You've proven that over the last 22 years of how much you have loved us. And I pray now that, Lord, blessing would be upon every person, every soul and household. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, amen. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Turn around and wave at somebody. God bless you. Amen. Well, um, I've never been um, away from this pulpit as long as I have. Gosh, it's so good to see some of you folks. I... um, December the 30th, as many of you know, I, uh, I came down with uh, COVID. My whole household got it. Uh, I was on my back for 14 days, but I'm recovered. And the whole family is certainly on the mend. God has been good. You know, here's the one thing about, uh, you know, and I've, I've mentioned this to some of you, but you do know that um, uh, before I was all set to have my soul, shoulder surgery. And I, um, uh, my doctor looked at my MRI and he says, okay, this is what's the damage and this is what's done and this is what we're going to do. And, and uh, you know, I had to go in, get my chest X-ray. I had to get my heart examined to make sure I could take all of the, whatever they give you to fall asleep. And, and um, went through all of that. And then I'll just tell you what, I, I, I woke up from this COVID thing and look, my shoulder is absolutely, totally healed. I mean, uh, it really was a miracle of God. Uh, and uh, really uh, my doctor, you know, uh, we were on a, you know, a telecommunication thing and I just said, look, I, there's just no pain. There's just no discomfort at all. He goes, that's quite remarkable. <laughs> that's all he said. That's quite remarkable. 
And uh, so I said, you know what? I don't want to uh, reschedule the surgery. And he goes, if I were you, I probably wouldn't either. So that's all that was said about that. And then he went on to talk to me about medical stuff. And so, uh, folks, I, since the last time I've been here, I've, I've gotten rumor, is it true, that we've got a new administration, you know, in our government, I guess? I heard a little bit about that. Um, can I just right now reassure you, and if you're at home right now, all of you who are at home, I just want to reassure you, first of all, that Jesus, it says of him that he is wonderful, that he is the counselor, that he is almighty God. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince of your peace. There's, there's no greater peace than understanding the peace that passes all understanding. And here's what I want to tell you. The governments of this earth are on his shoulders. And don't you for one minute think anything is out of control when you look at what almighty God does down through the centuries. Let's let history comfort us, if not only just the scripture. God will always work all things for his glory and all things for our good. And there is no power on this earth or in heaven that will successfully come against the body of Christ, the church, the gates of hell will never prevail. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. And let's hang on to what God says to us in the word and not be so shaken by the darkness. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, I want to talk to you about darkness. So if you would, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 27 Matthew chapter 27, but before I do, I think I should try to make some announcements. Um, here's all I want to say about announcement. My announcement person, uh, that something has happened. We still have a couple staff members that are still in quarantine, just to let you know. Um, so um, stuff happens. So this is all I'm going to tell you. I think we have some Bible studies coming up. In fact, I know we do. Look on your church app and confirm that, if you would. I think uh, our men's Bible study is uh, happening. I think the ladies' Bible study is happening on February, 20, February 2nd. 2nd. Am I right? Okay. See, so some of you know that. Uh, our family link, um, all of our young couples, they're going to all gather in this huge herd and eat together and love one another and uh, listen to God's word, I think, at my house. Am I right? <laughs> well, I want you to, Sandy has no idea. But um, hi, Sarah. Come on in here. Felipe, God bless you. Uh, I, I think that that's the case, but let me tell you how you'll know for sure. Everything that's going on in this church is on the church app. So with that in mind, let's, if you would, let's go to Matthew chapter 27. It's going to be here at church. It's going to, what? It's going to be here at church. Okay, see, my wife is good at making announcements today. By the way, you know, she tested positive for covid and here, I'm as healthy as you could be. And yet, didn't even affect my wife. She, she just going around, you know, with no, 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 no symptoms at all. Maybe a little bit. You got tired in the afternoon. So there you go. 
You guys, would you mind if I got to Bible study? Would that be all right? Let's look to the Word of God, shall we? I want to bring you to actually not just the darkest day in human history, but the darkest moment. And I want you to look, if you would, at Matthew chapter 27, and let's make sense of darkness. Verse 45. Now, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of those who stood there, when they heard this, they said that this man is calling for Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to Jesus to drink. And the rest said, no, let, leave him alone. Let us see if Elijah comes to save him. Verse 50, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. We know what he said in a loud voice from some of those other gospels, but Jesus said, it is finished. And then Jesus dies on the cross. I want you to know that I don't think that darkness could have been any darker than this moment if you were just a regular average observer. First of all, I want to bring out to you now from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. That really means from noon to three o'clock. What does it say? There was, come on, what's it say? Verse 45, there was darkness over the land. This is, this is a description of something far more than just a thick cloud cover. There was darkness over the land, which means that there was something extremely evil where all that was virtuous could have been lost and everything that was evil could have reigned supreme. Darkness was over the land. Let me share with you a couple scriptures here. First of all, Ephesians, if you were to look at your screen, chapter 6 and verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Come on, what does it say? We wrestle against. We wrestle against principalities and powers against, what does it say? The rulers of darkness of this age. There's one thing that the Bible teaches us and consistently throughout the scripture that every bit of tangible darkness is preceded by a spiritual darkness. I want you to understand that, that any time that, that we see things that are evil tangibly with our eyes and we hear it, it's because there are demonic forces that want to kill, steal, and destroy everything that is virtuous on this planet. If we were to look at first John, or John chapter 3, we know that when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, Jesus said that light has come into the world. But go ahead, read that out loud. What does it say? But men what? They love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil and neither do they come to the light least their deeds would be exposed. First Peter tells us something else about darkness. 
First of all, you are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're a peculiar people. You who proclaim the praises of him who does what? Calls you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. If you were just a natural observer during this time when Jesus was on the cross, you would think that most everything was hopeless. I want you to look at verse 39. How did they treat or speak of Jesus? And those who passed by, what did they do? They blasphemed him. Look at verse 41 chief priest and the leaders, they, they were mocking him. Verse 44, and even the robbers who were crucified with him, they reviled him. Folks, here's my point, and this is what I want you to really understand. Today, we see a lot of darkness in our land. I just don't want you to be a natural observer. I want you to be spiritually discerned. I want you to know that everything that happens tangibly that you see around, whether it be evil to its nth degree, just know this. There's something that's going on in the spirit. And in that spiritual realm is where I think that we need to become more equipped and realize why God even puts his church on this planet. I think it's important that when we see anger in our streets, when we see the fear of a pandemic that really keeps people almost in a panic, when we see political uncertainty, when we see child abuse, and when we see divorce and disunity like we've never seen it before, I want you to understand that there are spiritual forces at play. And there are things that want to take away from even the virtue that we have here in church. But folks, you and I are not natural observers. We're not meant to be. I want you to look at what the book of 1 Thessalonians tells us. That we are to be people here, let me do that one first, that we are sons of light. Look at this verse of scripture. We are sons of the day and we are not of the night, nor are we of the darkness. Therefore, look what it says, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch. And come on, what's the next word? Let us be sober. Let's not be intoxicated. Folks, I want to give you something today that I think is, is important for us to know. You watch too much news, you can get intoxicated with it. You listen to too many people tell you too many things about how horrible everything is let me tell you that all of a sudden, it can make you wobble and stumble spiritually. That suddenly we find that we get our focus off of what is really important, Jesus. Understanding what it is that the church is meant to be. Proclaimers of Jesus. And suddenly we can find ourselves shaken even spiritually when I uh, was on my back for 14 days let me tell you one thing that that happened to me it was just a I didn't listen to anything that was going I didn't listen to any opinions I couldn't <laughs> but I listened to my Lord and there were times that I really felt very ill and to a point to where I, I didn't see him. I, I just felt, I felt like I was forsaken. 
oh God, my God, why have you allowed me to be in this position? But I always knew he was there. I always knew that there was this, the presence of God was around me. And, and I'll tell you what, when I, when I really began to come out of it, and really what I did is I ended up having a real craving, believe it or not, for a, a Chipotle burrito. <laughs> and and uh, my family was really proud of me because I ate over half of it. I hadn't eaten anything for 14 days. And I ate that chipotle burrito and I ate it with Tabasco sauce I'll just let you know and I loved every bit of it and I found myself coming out of it but I found something that was so much even savory more than that burrito and that was my eyes and my focus were on Jesus and you know what? I'm not blinded by what's going on. I know there was the inauguration and I know all this stuff. But you know what? I, I, I just don't want to know a whole lot more. I want my focus to be on Jesus. There's just something that has revolutionized my heart by focusing on what is really powerful. And what is really important, can you imagine if you were this natural observer and you were watching people blaspheme Jesus, mock Jesus, revile Jesus, and here you're, you're seeing Jesus on the cross and, 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 and you're thinking, God, you're out of control. And can you imagine how disturbing the words would have been if you were a Christ follower and you heard Jesus say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Can you imagine that if, if, if you were there and, and all you did was observe tangibly, you, you would be thinking, Oh, man, if God has forsaken Jesus, we don't have a chance. And then look, if you would, at that verse 47, what the natural observer ended up doing and thinking. Look at verse 47. Some of them, they stood there when they heard that. They, they said, oh, this man's calling out for Elijah. Let me, let me just say this. If we are not spiritually discerned, we become open to deception. And I believe that here you see people who were not looking at anything spiritually. They were looking at things only tangibly. Look at this, and here's the rest of that verse in Thessalonians. You and I are not to be intoxicated, but we are to put on a breastplate of love and faith. What does a breastplate do? It protects you, doesn't it? And we're to put on a helmet. You think about that. What is underneath that helmet? It's, it's your brain. It's everything that you allow to come in. It's, and in fact, you're to put on a helmet in order to guard you from what I believe are demonic forces to keep you from having the mind of Christ. The helmet of salvation. And why? Because it's, it's, it's that hope that we have. If I can, let me just uh, share with you 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 through 16. Listen to this scripture. But the average man, now again, you're looking at this average observer, people that are in the world today. The average man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them 
because he is not spiritually discerned. But what's it go on to say? But, but you, you have the mind of Christ. You're not to look at things just outwardly. Look at verse 48. And immediately one of them ran and tried to get a sponge and fill it with sour wine. In, in, in other words, they wanted to try to see if maybe they could relieve Jesus' pain by making him intoxicated. And, and they tried to offer it to him. And the rest said, no, no, come on, leave him alone. Let's just see what happened. Maybe Elijah's going to come and save him. And then the darkest day, and in fact, the darkest moment of the darkest day happened in verse 50. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He died on the cross. Now, if you're just a natural observer and you're just looking at things tangibly, you're, you're going to see that. And what's going to be your conclusion? All is lost. Everything virtuous is just going to vanish. Evil is going to reign. But to those who are spiritually discerned, that moment that Jesus died on the cross was in fact the most triumphant moment where light was about to overcome the darkness, but no one knew it unless they were spiritually discerned. And can I tell you there's a lot of darkness in this land and it might appear that God is not in control and you're going to hear forces and people out there saying, oh, America's coming apart. Oh, there's no future for our children. And I just want to encourage you that there have been darker moments and throughout history there have been times where there has been just a thin little spirit spider web of, a, of, of hanging on, and yet God has always been faithful to listen and answer the fervent, effectual prayer of his people. Folks, we cannot be intoxicated by this world. We must keep ourselves spiritually discerned even though we live in a dark world. I see two things that we need to be careful of. And folks, I want to bring them out to you because I want to be able to bring life, not just to this body. I want us to see the life in the body of Christ. But I, I see two demonic spirits that are very much coming against the body of Christ today. And here they are, a demonic spirit of deception and a demonic spirit of disunity. And folks, if we don't keep our focus on Christ and the mission of the church, then we will continue to see deception and disunity that will go to its even further extents. Let me talk to you about deception just for a moment. Look at, if you would, a scripture up here, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Listen to this. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers who will turn them aside What's the word? To what? Fables. But what does it say about you? You, be watchful. 
I, I have, some of you have sent me links and have said, uh, what do you think about this? And then, uh, you know how you can get a link from YouTube and then, you know, you can read it. And then they've got like four or five more related links that are right there. Let me tell you, I, I have unfortunately have heard way too many preachers and pastors who have platforms and are using this dark season in America to say some pretty outrageous things. And honestly, after this week, they got a lot of explaining to do to their congregations. When I hear these preachers that are saying, oh, look, thus saith the Lord, God has told me that 666 is going to be on your forehead or your hand. you got to be careful. And now all of a sudden another comes up and says, boy, I, I, martial law is here. It's, you know what? I just want you to know right now. Thus said, God told me. Folks, I want you to know I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. I'll just tell you right now. I'm one of the idiot pastors that just don't know. And maybe I'm just not listening to the Lord hard enough. But I just want you to know I do not know what's going to happen. But I do know this, that whatever happens will be for the glory of God and will be for the good of you. That is what I can reassure you. We have to be careful of getting our nose out of the word of God and suddenly listening to so many things that even pastors and preachers can get so intoxicated that all of a sudden they sound like drunken men in their pulpits. Folks, I, uh, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. And I am not the greatest teacher of God's word. But I want to tell you one thing that I will always do is I will always point you to the Bible and to the scripture. And what, for what reason? That you might be watchful and that you might have the mind of Christ. Let me talk to you a little bit about the second thing, disunity. And if you don't mind, let me tell you the two things that I have found to, um, that, that, that people have very strong opinions about. And you can look around this room and you can see. And I know that many of you do. And here they are, strong opinions about getting a vaccine or not and strong opinions about wearing masks or not. Can I tell you that there have been and always seems to have been divisions within the body of Christ over things that really just don't matter so much when you look at the large picture of the centuries of mankind and the kingdom of God and what really matters when it comes to the love of Jesus? Let me tell you that if it wasn't, I have, I have told my elders that I'm going to wear a mask when I come into this building. And why? Because my elders told me that this is what we should try to do. I, I, I am, I'm going to do that just because I, 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 I want to be in subjection. But I also don't want to make it an issue. Because I know it can be. But folks, more than that, I want to be able to look beyond three months from now, six months from now. Do you realize that so many times we capitalize on things that really over the big picture just don't matter as much? If our focus is on our opinion more than on furthering the kingdom of God, then we will continue to see division in the body of Christ as a whole. But if our focus is on Christ and our focus is on the word of God, then I'll tell you what's going to happen. 
we're going to love one another and we're going to prefer one another. And in every way, we're going to see Jesus Christ exalted in our midst. Can I give you right now a word, thus says the Lord. Would you feel comfortable if I, right now, I'm going to tell you really right now, God is saying this to the church. Here it is. Get ready. Go to Colossians chapter 3. And I'm going to tell you right now what God is saying to his church. And don't you know that I'm such a coward that I would never say to you, thus says the Lord, and not read the Bible. <laughs> that makes it pretty safe. But I really do believe, folks, that this is a word that's going to bring life to you, that's going to bring love to the body of Christ and focus on our mission. I want you to look at Colossians chapter 3. Are you ready? Look at verse 12. Here is a word from God to Bobby Geis and Pastor Tom and anyone else. Okay, Bob, I'll let it be to you too. Here, here it is. Listen to this. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has had a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body. Oh, here it comes. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms. That actually is a cue for my worship team to come on up. I want you to admonish one another in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs, singing. Listen, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all, come on, look at this, do all of it in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thus says the Lord. Father, help us and deliver us from the flesh that so easily makes us critical or angry or makes us afraid or look upon our brother in any less degree than you do. Father, I pray that we would be the people of God 
with the mind of Christ, loving one another, even as you love us. I just read to you Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. And I want to ask, if you would commit your heart, mind, and soul to live up to that behavior and mindset, I'll just tell you right now, you can't do it in yourself. But would you ask the Holy Spirit to help you to be the man or the woman of God described in that Colossians 3, 12 through 17. And if that is you, I want you to stand to your feet. Say, yes, Lord, I need the help of the Holy Spirit and I want to live that manner that you describe in the word if that's you stand to your feet and even if you're at home would you stand to your feet if you're able maybe you're not but I want you to know that right now I want this to be more than just the end of a sermon I want it to be a time when you rededicate your heart and your mind and your soul to your Savior. Father, we love you. And we ask you, O oh Lord, right now to take me as I am. And Father, I'm a sinner. I fall so short of your grace but I ask you right now to take me, make me and mold me into your image in Jesus' precious name. And all of God's people said, amen. Let's worship him, folks. Worship him. You unravel me with a melody. You surround, surround me, me with a song. Oh, deliverance from my enemies. Till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer slave to fear.
that no matter what this world names us, Lord, Lord, we've already been named and known by you, Lord Jesus. We are your children. Lord, we are sons and daughters and heirs to a throne that this world cannot see. So Lord, may your Holy Spirit guide us this week, Lord. Lord, may we be intentional in our thoughts towards you and of you. We love you so much, Lord. Thank you for keeping us safe. Lord, be with us this week. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a good week, church.